at about $50 million. Now, these guys were, you know, the, the guys were in their 20s. They probably started the company less than a year ago. And they're saying, well, how could, you, how could you possibly think your business is worth $50 million? So you have no assets. You've got no revenues. You've got no customers. <laughs> He's like, you don't have anything. I mean, you don't have, I mean, I could recreate your entire business from scratch myself, you know, for, you know, next to nothing. And yet you want, you want me to pay you $5 million to get 5% of this thing? I mean, why would I do that? And all they kept telling me was, well, well you don't understand. We're going to go public. <laughs> and you're going to make a lot of money. And I'm like, well, how am I going to go? I mean, you're, I said, you think you're going to find people to pay even more than this in a public offer? How are you ever going to make any money? But that was the concept. And he said, well, you, you, know, you don't understand how the stock market works. You know, I'm like, well, <laughs> I was like, I understand how business works. And I understand that you know, you're not worth, these two, you guys are not worth $50 million because you started an internet company last week. You know? But this is, this is how it was working for a while. It was, it, it was crazy. But you know, I got the same things during the real estate bubble. I remember you know, I was renting houses. And so I would go and you know, I'm still renting my house now in, in Connecticut. And I would go and I would go to you know, houses for rent. And I remember one time I went and there was a house for rent. And I looked at it. And the realtor was there. And apparently, the person who was renting it out was an investor who just bought the place. And I asked them, you know, what's the, you know, what was the rent? And I would forget what it was. Maybe it was $4,000 a month, whatever it was for this place. And I knew, I said, well, you know, what did the guy pay for this? I mean, what did he pay? And I said, well, I said, how can, he be, how can he make any money renting it out to me? At, I mean, isn't this going to lose money? I mean, isn't, doesn't he have negative cash flow? They said, well, yeah, I mean, you know, you lose, he loses a couple thousand dollars a month. And I said, well, <laughs> and I said to him, but, but you recommended this as an investment? I mean, this was, he says, yeah. I said, well, but why would you recommend as an investment property, a property that has a negative cash flow? I mean, why would you have him buy it? And he said, well, you don't understand. This property is going to appreciate. This property can double in the next couple of years. And I said, why? Why would it double? I mean, you can't even cash flow it positive at the price it's at now. How's it going to go up in value? And, and, and I, said, you know, I said, real estate is a function of rents. And then the guy said to me, same thing. he said, you know, you don't understand real estate. <laughs> he was telling me that rents don't matter to real estate. Just like when I was telling people to buy stocks, they were telling me dividends don't matter. I'm buying this stock because it's going to go up. Well, why should it go up? It doesn't even pay a dividend. It's already, I mean, who would buy it? You know, I did the same thing when I rented my apartment. I, had a, I, I was renting an apartment. Um, after I got divorced, I was renting an apartment in Stanford. And beautiful apartment, right on the water. I had my boat there. I was beautiful views of the of the sound. I had right on the corner, great unit. It was a beautiful building. I had a concierge. It had uh, you know a uh, uh, pool. It had uh, uh, you know covered parking. It was a security building. It had racquetball courts. It had a gym with a with a trainer on staff. A lot of amenities. Right next door, there were maybe twenty year old townhomes for sale. And I went to one of the open houses just for kicks. And there was a, a unit on sale, whatever they wanted, five or $600,000 for this unit. That was about the same square footage as what I was renting. But it had no view of the water. It was dark. It was old. There was no security. It had none of the amenities. Yet the property taxes and maintenance fees alone were like $1,000 a month. And by the time I would have paid the, the, the mortgage, if, if that's how I financed it, I would have been spending more money per month to live in one of these little little places than this really nice apartment that I was renting right next door. And I asked the realtor, I said, you know, I said, you know why, why would anybody buy this place? You could just rent right next door. There's more units available. You know, I know I just rented. <laughs> and, and the lady said to me, well, you know, but if you, when you rent, when you move out, you're not going to have any equity. I said, well, what do you mean? <laughs> she says, well, when you buy this property, you know, then, you know, it appreciates. And then when you can sell it, when you move out, you make money. I said, well, why the hell should it appreciate? I mean, didn't you understand? It's already overpriced. You can rent right next door. Why should it go up? And she said, well, that's how real estate works. I said, so you mean the way real estate works is I have to sacrifice. I have to turn down the opportunity to live in a really nice place. I live in this dump for a while. And because I did that, I make money. And somebody else is going to come to me a year or two from now and overpay by even more. 
and say, I don't, I don't want to live in that nice place next door. I'd rather pay more to live here because this is going to appreciate. And they, they totally forgot, you know, what real estate meant. I mean, real estate's you know, a place to live. But everybody thought it was going to go up, so they were, they, they were all crazed. But anyway, get, getting back to where I was before I went off on all these tangents. Um, so we, we had the, the, the stock market bubble because the Fed, the Fed was too easy. And eventually, Greenspan started to raise interest rates. I mean, he saw what he was doing. You know, he talked about irrational exuberance back in 1996, and they took him to the woodshed because he, you know, he said something negative, so he shut up going forward. But eventually, he started raising interest rates, and he burst the bubble. He burst the stock market bubble. And of course, when the stock market bubble burst, a lot of the malinvestments were exposed. A lot of people that were working at these dot-coms, well, they needed to find real jobs because they were wasting their time, because they were, they were destroying wealth. They weren't creating anything of value. So we had a lot of 